Shalom and welcome to our 21st annual Feast of Tabernacles. This is part 24 of Preparing for Rulership. true life. I am that true life that all the prophets bear witness of. And not every single individual who puts on white has my spirit in him. They don't have my light in them. So if you focus on them, you'll be focusing on darkness. Isaiah 26.3 says that you who keep your mind staying on me will have perfect peace. The only way you can know that it's true is try it. If you do not have peace of mind, then you are not focusing on me. Oh, I think I better repeat that. 
If your mind is disturbed about anything, then your mind is not focused on me. The moment you can gain control of your mind and focus it on me, it's called refocus. Peace will come to your mind. Now, focusing on me is not focusing on my hair or my shoes or my body. But focus on the words that come forth from my mind. A carnal minded person. When I say, focus on me, their carnal mind will say, that man? For the carnal mind cannot perceive the spiritual. And will not comprehend that I'm speaking on a spiritual plane, spiritual level. That is why I teach you in Matthew 11, 29, learn of me. My attribute. And you will have perfect peace of mind. So anybody have a problem? You're out of focus. Your mind is out of focus. And you cannot see clearly. Glory to Yahweh. Glory to Yahweh. Hallelujah, Yahweh. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Yahweh. Hallelujah. Focus on the true light. And your pathway will be clear. You'll be able to see where you're going, see where you've been, see where you are. When you walk in my life. You want to see somebody confused. Observe someone trying to follow someone other than me. You will witness confusion. Watch somebody doing other than what I teach, and you will see a burdened down person. If they're not burdened down, going against what I teach, then your mind has become callous. Your heart has become hard, and you're on your way to a reprobate mind. The next thing you'll find yourself outside, Though you be in here, you'll come into this building and know you outside of it. And it's a sad thing to know that Yahweh has come to save you and that you in here where he is and feel outside of it. It's a terrible feeling for Yahweh to give you a gift and you don't feel like it's yours. Oh, but those of us who know what is going on. It's one thing to clap because somebody else is clapping. It's one thing to dance because somebody else is dancing. Oh, but when the spirit is on you and you can do it. I shed tears of joy. You're not looking at a sad man. You're looking at a happy man. I present to you the truth. And the truth that I present to you will set you free indeed. Free from what? Free from whatever bounds you. Whatever bounds you, whatever got you bound. When I free you, you are free in deep. Who am I? I come in the name of my Father, Yahweh. Therefore, I am named 
after my father, Yahweh. My father's name is Yahweh, so my name is Yahweh. I am not him, yet we are one. My name is Yahweh bin Yahweh. That means my father's name is Yahweh. What does that mean? Yahweh, the son of Yahweh. That's what my name means. That's what my name says in Hebrew. Yahweh bin Yahweh in Hebrew is Yahweh, the son of Yahweh. So see, there's no difference in the name. There's no spelling difference. There's no difference. That means we the same. He is my father. I'm his son. And we're one. How are we one? The word. I do not have a will independent of his. My father's will is my will. My will is my father's will. So what does that make us? I am not smart enough to come up with a will outside of his or greater than his. Anyone who thinks that they're smart enough to have a will outside of his have not studied him. He has made an allowance for his will and those outside his will. And has written about both. And the rewards of both. And when you discover those outside of his will are going to be destroyed by his will, will want to change from being outside his will and get in his will to inherit eternal life that he has promised those who are in his will. I am an heir of all that is of Yahweh. And when you accept me, you become a joint heir with me. What a blessing. So I challenge you to do your research and study and find out all that I have said to you thus far. Study it. I am here tonight declaring to you that I am the mighty God. That's who I am. I am the mighty God. You are looking at the mighty God. Now it matters not to me whether you believe that or do not believe that. It doesn't make any difference to me. Which one you do? Because I offer the same challenge to both of you. If you say you believe I'm the mighty God, I still challenge you with the same challenge that the man who says, I do not believe you're the mighty God, I challenge him with the same challenge. You get the same challenge. Which means that if both of you accept the challenge, you'll end up with the same result. Though you approach me from two different beliefs, I dare you to approach me. I challenge you to approach me, either from disbelief or belief, either one. I'm satisfied what you'll discover. Now you cannot say, you cannot logically say that I am not the mighty God when you have no idea what the means. When I say, when I ask you the question right now, stand up and give me the mastery of the understanding of the word the. Now if your mind is drawing a blank, you can understand right away that you have nothing to judge me with when I say I am the. See, I'm not just mighty God, I'm also the. I said I am the. Your mind may be hung up on God, but see, I said I am the. I am. I also said I am. So before you can approach me to determine whether I am or not, you have to first master I. 
and I is deeper than E-Y-E. <laughs> oh, if you haven't studied I, then you certainly cannot understand M. If you don't know that I also stands for the Roman numeral one, so you have some studying to do. To even approach me, you have to study and learn about I. Because I am. Please turn to side two. Your, your ability to see me and hear me establishes the fact that I am. And what do you know about I? Anybody get the picture yet? You can't deny that I am. But can you logically explain I am? And until you begin that approach, you cannot deny me. You can only be emotional. An emotional, illogical kid. Which makes you more stupid than a child because a baby does not question its parents about what it learned. The baby accepts whatever the parent teaches, right or wrong. The baby does. So Yahweh said in his holy word that you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven except you be as a little child. Matthew what? Matthew 18. Now I'm only testifying, I'm just going through the testimony right now. This is not even the class. But this is the approach to the class. This proves it's going to be a mighty feat. Matthew 18, 3. Read, please. And said, Verily I say unto you, Except ye be converted, and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. I have to ask the question. This presupposes that you would like to enter the kingdom of heaven. So I have to ask the question, how many of you want to enter the kingdom of heaven? Praise God. Now here's the price you've got to pay. You have to give up being smart. You have to give up Pretending you know something when you really don't know nothing. And go ahead and admit the only way for me to learn, take in new knowledge, is to become as a little child. Verse 4, read, read what you have to do with, to do that. Read. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. You have to humble yourself. What does that mean? You have to stop thinking you know. I know. You can't tell me nothing. Right. See, I listen to people when they say that. As soon as a man says to me in my presence, you can't tell me nothing, I say, you know, it was nice meeting you. Excuse me, I have a lot of work to do. Shalom alaikum. Y'all take care of him. I'm gone. See, he, why should I talk any further? He just told me up front, I can't tell him nothing. Now what would it make me to try to continue to tell him something when he told me that I couldn't? You know what I found out in my life? When a person says that and you continue trying to feed them knowledge, I don't care if you're there a day, a week, or a year, at the end of that period, they're the same fool they were when you met them. Same fool. You come with your mind shut up, then you won't take nothing out of him. So whatever you came in here in your head, that's what you'll leave out with. So if it was nothing in there, you're gonna leave out of here with what? Nothing. Just like that fit. Nothing can get in, nothing can get out. Praise God. And of course, I'm not interested in those kind of people, those who don't want to learn. So I offer you a challenge. You have to study I. You got to humble yourself. If you want to enter the kingdom of heaven, here's the formula. Here's the formula. You must humble yourself 
as a little child. Here, children, when you teach them, do they say, that's not right? Do children in any school say, that's not right? When you were in school as a child and they told you that was a tree, what'd you go home and tell your mama? Your mama said that was a fork. What'd you tell your friend? That's the nature of a little child. So when you want to enter into the kingdom of heaven, you have to understand a basic principle. Who is the king of heaven? The kingdom is, there's a king there. There's a king of heaven. There's a king that owns heaven. And when you want to enter into the king's dome, kingdom, then you have to go by the king's rule. You have to humble yourself to the king's program. Oh, don't tell me you don't humble yourself to things. How many drive a car? Then you humble yourself. I bet you're not driving without a license in your pocket. I will find you humble in jail. <laughs> Why don't you get a driver's license? Huh? Because you think it's a good idea? You know why you get it. You know you're going to jail without it when you get stopped or caught, huh? So what are you doing when you get it? You humbling yourself to those who have the power to put you in jail for driving without their permission in their kingdom. Mm -hmm. And when you buy the car, you can pay cash for it. Or you can buy it on time, or you say, oh, I'm going to buy this car, I own it. You can pay cash for it. It's yours, right? Well, if it's yours, you shouldn't have to get a license tag and put on the back of it. What if you drive it without a tag on the back? You gonna get stopped? What are they gonna do to you and your car? They're gonna put you and your car in jail. That your car, even your car goes to jail. They call it a pound, you impound, you call it what you want to. <laughs> And while, as long as it's sitting there, when you get ready to go pick it up, you have to pay for them taking it in. And you have to pay for it sitting there in jail. And you have to identify with papers that it's yours. But if it's yours and you got all this power and you don't have to humble nobody, then why did you and your car go to jail? So you humble yourself, huh? Before the king of the land in order to drive what you thought was yours that's really not yours. See, it's not your kingdom. It's there. So you humble yourself in order to drive. What? Yes. You buy a house and you pay cash for it. It's yours, right? White folks can't take it from you, can they? Wonder what happened to Overtown. My people own that property. Did they take it? Yes, Did they take it? Yes, the ones that took it must have owned it. The people that paid for it bought an illusion. It was not real. So in order to keep your house, I don't care if you paid for it, they have a thing called taxes. Now what if you say, I'm not paying you suckers nothing. I bought this house and land, it's mine, and I'm gonna defend it with a shotgun, a cannon. Well, they do to you. They'll bring in the army if they have to, the Marines and the Navy, and the Air Force. They will get their man. If they have to bomb out the whole block, they'll get their man. They'll teach the rest of you, humble yourself. <laughs> uh -huh. 
What am I teaching? Man, is there the truth? <laughs> Reality? Am I teaching you what's real or is this made up when I'm talking about it? No. What keeps us on the bottom is we don't ever know what's real. Fantasy and an illusion is you think you own something and can't see that you don't. I'm here to give you the ownership of the whole planet Earth. And I'm letting you know, I know what, your, what, what ownership is. Ownership is when you have the power to make the law and enforce them. Now all you need to find is the king of heaven and join him. And what you're going to end up with? Power in heaven. Can anybody see that? If you can't see it, I'm going to keep praying for you and teaching hard. <laughs> but here's the formula. You must be converted. Although I'm not going to try to convert you, you still must be converted. What does convert mean? It means change. Change from what? Your way of thinking to a new way of thinking. What has your way of thinking prospered you? <laughs> Do you believe that you need to change your way of thinking? Anybody here think that you need some new thoughts? Say it down. See, if you don't admit that, you have a serious problem. That means you're going to keep doing what you've been doing. And what have you been doing that makes us free? Have your thoughts made us free? Have your thoughts Open up businesses for our people. Have your thoughts open up grocery stores and buying hotels, tractor trailers and bus lines. I mean, have your thoughts done that? Have your thoughts brought unity and economic power to our people? Have, have your thoughts brought us respect? Have your thoughts cleaned us up? Then would you admit that your thoughts are of no benefit to us? <laughs> How many admit that your thoughts outside of Yahweh's thoughts have not benefited us? Well, then don't you admit that... You, How many like what you see us doing? Then what do you need to do with your thoughts? Change them. That's what convert me. Convert me. I changed my old silly thoughts for the king's thoughts. What king? King of heaven. What is heaven? My God, I got to draw that out? Heaven is righteous rulership, freedom, equality, justice, peace, no war, no destruction, no de degeneracy, no debasement, no murder, no burglars, no thieves, no robbers, no adultery, all that's heaven. Hmm? Peace of mind. A high all the time, just the ultimate high. You don't have to buy no high. Mm -hmm. You don't have to buy a 10 or 15 minute high. You can just be high 24 hours like me. And you can have this high I have. All you have to do to get it is get my high is convert. See, I have the ultimate high. I can give you the ultimate high. Now, how many want to be high? See, if you don't want to be high, you got a serious problem. <laughs> that means you want to be low. I am. <laughs> well, anybody want to be low? I don't want to be around them. I want to be around people that want to be high. Praise God. And what's so fantastic, every one of you can get this high. But you have to pay a price. See, the first price you have to pay is be converted. And convert means you have the power to change your way of thinking. This concludes part 24 of Preparing for Rulership.